Now, it's Christmas. What is one of the most famous Christmas films? It is Scrooge. And in this video, you're going to see why it's a film everyone should watch. Check out this YouTube video now. Tis the season to be jolly. Tra -la 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 -la. Happy Christmas, everybody. We're talking about how the Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens's book, it really, really changed my life. This was a book that was written in 1843. And in this video, I really want to kind of unpick it and explain to you why I think it's an amazing story. And it's something we should all kind of stop and really think about what the story is telling us. So for those of you that don't know the story, the story was based in London in the 18th century when things were a little bit difficult, challenging for people. There was a lot uh, of, of poverty. And there was this character called Ebenezer Scrooge. And Scrooge, it's not really that clear, but it seems like he was probably a, a money lender. And his business partner, Marley, died seven years before the story starts. And there he is, he's in his office, it's very cold, and he's got someone who works there called Bob Cratchit. And Bob Cratchit is working really hard, and he says to Ebenezer Scrooge, could you put some more coal on the fire because it's so cold? And Ebenezer Scrooge says, no, just put another jumper on, put a layer on. So he's a person who's really not very nice particularly, and he's very comfortably un comfortable. Now, what's this got to do with how the book changed my life? Look, I'm massively into personal development. I've written 20 books published in multiple languages all over the world. But I read a book in the 90s by Tony Robbins called Awaken the Giant Within. And in the book, he talked about the Scrooge story and this Scrooge exercise. And basically what he was trying to do was get people to think about the consequences of their actions. Now, I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. So, that night, when the story begins, Ebenezer Scrooge goes to sleep. And in his sleep, he sees a ghost, and it's the ghost of Marley, his business partner that died seven years before. And Marley's there with all of these chains around him, and he's explaining to Scrooge that unless he changed his ways, he would end up just like Marley. And Scrooge kind of listens to this, but like, mm, bah, humbug, and goes back to sleep. But just before he goes to sleep, Marley says, you are going to be visited by three ghosts uh, this evening. The ghost of Christmas past, present, and future. So the ghost of Christmas past, first of all, comes, and she's a beautiful lady, and she takes Ebenezer Scrooge back to his past, where he sees himself in the school that he was at in a boarding school alone at Christmas. Scrooge's sister actually died. And you can tell that Scrooge was massively affected by this. And you also see Scrooge's fiance, her name was Belle, who passed the engagement ring back to him and said, gold is more important uh, to you. And then Scrooge also sees her being married and being happy. And he's really affected by this. He's really starting to see the past with a fresh pair of eyes. And we know that people don't change when we tell them what to do. People change when their perspective changes. And this is what Anthony Robbins is asking people to do in this Scrooge uh, process that he takes people through, which is to, to think about your past. Think about why you are the way that you are, because ultimately we always have a choice. And what most people do is they keep repeating the past unless something happens, unless they have an epiphany. Normally, it's something difficult and horrible that happens that makes people behave in a different way. And maybe as you rethink this story of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, maybe even watch the film or read the story, you might have a different perspective. So he sees his past and then he goes back to sleep. He's pretty distraught, but then he's woken up by the ghost of Christmas present, which is this big guy, big giant of a character who basically is all jolly and shows Scrooge what, what is happening right now. And he takes Scrooge to the house of Bob Cratchit, who works for Ebenezer Scrooge. And Scrooge sees Bob Cratchit's one of his sons. His name's Tiny Tim. He's, he's a cripple and he's very, very ill. And he starts to see that they don't really have very much money. They can't keep the house particularly warm. And he also starts to realize 
the errors of his ways. He starts to realize the repercussions of his actions. And again, going back to the Tony Robbins thing, when I read this, it really made me start looking at what I was doing and my clients. Back then I was a personal trainer, starting to see the errors of our ways because once again, we always have a choice. So he sees his present in such a way where he's waking up thinking, I don't really want this present, which is kind of interesting because at Christmas we give presents and sometimes one of the most important things we can all do is just look at how we are right now in the present moment. But if that wasn't enough for Ebenezer Scrooge to decide to change his ways, when he goes back to sleep again, he's then woken up by the ghost of Christmas future. And this is a guy that's dressed like the Grim Reaper and he doesn't say very much. And he takes Ebenezer Scrooge to a graveyard where he sees his grave. And he realizes that no one's there. He actually realizes that people are glad that he's not there anymore. But he also sees the grave of Tiny Tim, realizing that that was his last Christmas that he saw at the present moment. And it's at this point he has a massive change of heart and realizes, hang on, none of this has actually happened yet. I could actually do something different. And in the exercise that Tony Robbins takes people through, it's that ability to make people think about, look, if you don't do anything about change, you could carry on doing what you're doing, but where would you be in the future? So I've done this with so many people, specifically people who aren't very healthy right now, if you get them to think about the consequences of their actions, because you know if you've watched any of these YouTube videos that we talk about the, the science that shows most people don't have a relationship to their future self. When you put people in these machines where you look at brain activity and you ask them to think about themselves, you see a part of the brain light up. If you ask them to think of a stranger, you see a different part of the brain light up. When you ask them to think of themselves in the future, it's the stranger. They don't recognize where they're going with what they're doing. And right now, you actually have a choice. So the story concludes with him waking up in the morning of Christmas Day, and he is so excited. He puts on his Christmas hat. He goes and celebrates Christmas with some of the members of his extended family. Uh, he then goes around to the Cratchit family, and he gives, and he spends the rest of his days just giving and making a difference. Was he a bad person that turned good? Or was he a good person who had some bad experiences, wasn't really able to make sense of them, became what some people might call bad or unhappy, but then through an epiphany, he changed his life. Ultimately, a great life, it doesn't happen by chance, it happens by design. We can design the life that we want. You know, and when it comes to you, what's the moral here for you? As the hero on the hero's journey, we all are. Scrooge was a hero on the hero's journey. He ended up doing something truly heroic. What about you? What do you wanna start doing? And what do you wanna stop doing? Because the future, is yours. It's yours for the taking. Look, and we launched the Start and Stop One Challenge. I really encourage you to check this out. This is your opportunity to get coached by me, help you identify with where you want to go, and then the specific processes, the specific things that if you did start and stopped, if you did them for an extended period of time, you would apply one of the most powerful laws in nature, and it's the law of compounding, aggregating, over time. Your future is unwritten, but you can actually start to see the future and write the future that you want, especially now knowing that you have the power to change. Merry Christmas to you and love to, to everyone you know and your family, and we'll see you soon. Let's do this.